comes along. Just play the old Chinese laundry man. That's what he was saying. Don't Chinese laundry man. Oh, so, so. Right? And when they looked up, the Chinese stole everything. <laughs> Remember CDs, DVDs, the old, all that stuff? The Chinese would copy everything, even they probably still do it. I know the last DVDs I used to buy was from a Chinaman up in New York. He'd come through here and I'd buy all, I got stacks of them. I'd just buy them all because he gave me a bargain, you know, a couple of dollars a piece. So I'd buy all of them. They all had nice plastic on them and they all showed good. They was all good DVDs. So. China slipped up on America. How? They just kept programming and oh, da 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 da. And America didn't get mad at China until two years ago when they came out with their plan for the future. We're going to do this, we're going to do that. And America said, look at these people. But it's too late for boss man. You know, other countries can make decisions. They have a certain amount of cooperation and coordination. The United States cannot make decisions. It's built into the, they can't make long range decisions. Number one, if you're in Congress, you can't build a new highway system that helps. Why? Because that'll spend money right now and by the time you get out of office, that guy is going to get the benefit. Right? So you got to have an instant, all the money, you got to have an instant comeback. I got this for you. I got that for you, right? That's lying to the people. But other people have long range plans. Germans have long range plans. Chinese have long range plans. All their plans, well, we'll do this by 2035, and by the time we have our 100th uh, inauguration in 2049, you know, 1949, they had to, we're going to do this at now. All of China is going to be what they call moderately uh, prosperous. Not rich, but moderately prosperous. They don't know what they're what they're doing with China. They think everything is economic with China. But China is civilizational. You listen to Bruce Lee and him. They talk about a Chinaman's chance. Remember all that in the martial arts? Why? Because the Chinaman's over here helping build the railroads. They like the dynamite. <laughs> and if you can get out and they can pull you up fast enough, right? You don't get blown up. So many of them got blown up, you know, the white folks throwing the rope down and having the Chinaman stick the dynamite in there. And then he, they say, you don't have a Chinaman's chance. You know, that's where they come from. Bruce Lee, what's all the other Chinamen? You hear? You see them. I don't care whether they're nationalists from Hong Kong. They're always mad at what white folks did to them. And their main thing is, we are now proud to be Chinese. Economics was only uh, the road leading up to that. We feel good now about being Chinese. They just have to control themselves about payback. You know what I mean? Okay, but let me, let's, get, let's stay with the, the abused white man by the Zionists. The abused white man uh, set up means that we let the world know and let the white man know that we are not your enemy. And now, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, everybody knows, right, that it's the big companies that's killing them.
killing their family, destroying them people. Why? Because all of them got guns up there. They want them to use their guns on me and you. We don't tell them, no, 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 no. I'm your sincere advisor, the Bible said. You <laughs> don't say that. We're your friend. We go through all them churches and places and we teach the people something we know. Never give up on your dope fiend son, brother, or parent. You know what I mean? All you do is you just keep in there and you keep helping as much as you can. I say every now and then, pull back and take a little breather, just like a fight. You know, you, okay, I'm about drained out now. I'm gonna pull back, it's just for a month. Could be a year, but I'm gonna take a breather on this guy. But I'm coming back with love and companionship. And all of that, we have the message that they need to hear because we've been through it. We've been through it. All it is, is it's simple for us. The other Muslims, they're going to vote in uh, Khalifa, whatever they're going to do. They're going to vote in there in America. That, of course, they're crazy, but that's their business. We can't make them do nothing, but what we can do is do what we got to do. After they begin to see it, they'll get the idea of how to interact with people that we know. We know the white American mind. We just know it because we're here. And now, their story is sad as ours. Their story is a, it, it's, it's sad as Indians. On the rest, it's, it's, the same, you know, we're all in this together now. We're all in this together. That's, that's what's happening. And at a certain time in history, Allah arranged it. The, the, the boss man didn't arrange this. He did some manipulation. But he didn't, he didn't do it with this intention. Boss man have a saying, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Why would somebody say that? Because they've studied and they know that in order to do good deeds, you got to have the Nia first. The road to hell is not paved with good intentions. The road to hell is paved with bad intentions. So they use reverse psychology on me. They said, well, if the road to hell is paved with uh, good intentions, I, I might as well do something bad and, or do something personal for myself and family and keep going. The other thing is uh, all the wars in the Middle East and everywhere else. White folks, 22 people up and dying. Well, they're all kind of folks. Every day. This is the first time in history where more people are dying from a result of the war than from the war. I was watching the American Experience last night, this old thing I had to do on World War I. They called it shell shocked and all that stuff. PTSD. Hey, huh? PTSD. PTSD is shell shock. Mm -hmm. They've been knowing all of Can you imagine hiding in a hole for months or 80 years? And just, all you hear all day is bombs busted a block away, 10 feet away. Hey, man, it'll run anybody crazy. It'll run anybody crazy. But when they come back here, they tell them all oh, those weak people and people they ain't, they ain't got nothing. With the Gulf War syndrome, they use depleted uranium. The people come back and say, boss, man, we got all this. And they say, I got to take care of some aspirin. It ain't nothing wrong with you. Because you couldn't see it. You couldn't prove it. Okay. The system 
All we have to do is point at the system, what it is, and what it's always been. And who's in it together? All of us. So, it's the human family. Now, I believe that's part of our mission as Muslims, is to help the human family. Okay. There's something that uh, we always uh, we refer to as a song of freedom. A uh, song of freedom could be national, racial, or historical. You know, something like uh, James Weldon Johnson, what's that? Uh, lift every voice and sing or something, you know? It could be all those things we heard in the 60s, people get ready and all that. That reflected, no, that reflected the time. That reflected the time. But there's other song of freedom. Uh, that's international song. The international for communism. The Uhuru, freedom and liberation, you know. Uh, but there's a personal one that only the individual hears. It's, it's their song. It might be piped in with all the rest, but it's a personal song. When I'm talking about a song, I'm talking about a an attitude, a state of being. Uh, I can just tell you, yesterday I was just listening to that all day long. It just tripping. So to me, this is a special time. It's not a song of all and words, all that. It's an attitude, it's environmental circumstances. And what I'd like to say today is, out of all the history of everything that's happened over the years, you know, I have a, a little vision that in about 15 years, you know, it'll be a big show somewhere. And they say, we want you to come up, I'll be 90 years old, and of course. And, uh, Tell us how y'all did that. What we're talking about right now. And I may not make it, that's 15 years from now. But I just imagine or visualize that that time will come. We just say 15 years from now, it could be 20 years, it could be 25, it could be way up there. But we would be explaining to the people the process of uh, what we did as a community. And it's something that goes back to when I was younger they had a, a statement that people would make that I want to be a credit to the race. A credit to the race. When, uh, what's her name, in 1939, when she gave a speech, Gone with the Wind, when she played the big black woman, I think of her name. Is that Butterfly? Huh? Is that Butterfly McQueen? No, 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 no. This, the big black woman yeah. that worked in the, in the house all the time, mm -hmm. I don't know what, McDonald's, something like that. Gone with the Wind. But she, when she got the Academy Award in 1939, had a McDonald's or something, something like that. Yeah, she, she said, "I want to be. I, I'm considered a credit to the race." That's something that modern people don't talk about. But in those days, uh, everybody wanted to be. Not everybody, but. We thought in racial terms, we were a people, definitely a people, 
We lived in the same community. And so, whatever we did, there was always that sign, a sound that we wanted to be a credit to the race. What I'm saying right now is, this is a time that we can fulfill all of those uh, aspirations and be a credit to humanity. A credit to humanity. The human being is full of realities. A good system, a good system reaches in and brings the good out of human beings not the worst. This system that we have now is designed to bring envy, jealousy, hatred out of people. To divide the people up amongst each other so the blacks hate the whites, the whites hate the Mexicans, and everybody is built off of that type of competition that we compete with each other on ignorance. But I believe from some of the experiences of going around the world, you know what? I found that people are basically good. And people have good in them. But the systems are not designed to bring the good out of people. It's designed to institute the envy, the jealousy, the hatred. And that's what shaitan do. Shaitan know the human being. So he has all of his stuff working to bring the worst out of the human being, not the best. Right? Because if you bring the best out of him, he's going to be God-centered. Now we got all of these idols that people are worshiping. Their degree, their job, their color, their, all of that stuff. And just like Nimrod, as, as the Quran says, Nimrod says, uh, uh, well, uh, Abraham tells him, well, my God gives life and my God gives death. He said, I'm the one. Think about whether it's Pharaoh, whether it's, I'm the one that give life and death. Nigga, I put you in your job. Right? That's the way they talk. That's the way they act. I'm the one. You mess with me, this is a big company. You mess with me, nigga, you'll never be heard from again. You lose your job. When your job go, your wife is gone, your kid is gone, you're going to be an alcoholic or a dope fiend. Systems treat people like that. And you know what? They're 89% right. <laughs> they have that power. So Nimrod, I mean, uh, Abraham said, my God calls the sun to rise in the east and set in the west. So he was dumbstruck. We're in a pivotal position like that. There ain't no prophets and nobody else coming. So the human factor takes place. The idols were different. The idols were sticks, stones, and all of that. Now the idols is, is uh, all that other stuff. PhDs, bank accounts. Excuse me one second. Salaam alaikum. Yes?
personality, the shaitan, he tells people, and he ain't talking to me and you, he talking to, you want to be a whistleblower? Hey, this is it for you. Look at what he, uh, Julian Assange, the guy that had, had, had him turn white, they didn't run him crazy. They won't even let him out of jail to go because they got carnivorous criminal, whatever they got. They won't let him go. He was in the embassy seven years, seven, eight years or something. That's enough time. That's a time served in the embassy. They won't let him go. Why? Right? Because he blew the whistle on him. The little boy that turned girl, what's his, what's his, uh, his they name? Uh, Bradley, uh, Bradley Manning. Oh. Bradley Manning, his name is something else now. Uh, no, yeah. but Chelsea. they tortured Chelsea. the guy. Huh? Chelsea. Chelsea, they tortured the guy. They just tortured him. And what he showed was true. They had the helicopter brrr, killing people. Do we ain't kill nobody? Then they show it, and, and they don't say, "Well, uh, we're sorry, we got caught." They say, "No, just for you telling on us, we we gonna make light." And an old Don carried it to another level. He didn't got rid of. Well, he ain't got no cabinet. Tell the truth. He don't have nothing. He don't have nothing. He do everything himself, and his daughter and his stepson. <laughs> Tell us the law. Son of love is insanity, right? Every agency is empty. Just about every, he didn't fire all or whatever they call them, inspect the generals of this, inspect the guy, he said, you know, you told on me, I you got to go. Everybody is like that. That's good for us. All of that is good for us. This period, has all the characteristics of societal transformation, historical transformation. That this is the period. Okay, as we outline what part we want to play in it, all it is is the road to heaven is paved with good intention. And that's the main thing. If we have optimism and good intentions, if we know where we want to go, Allah shows how to get there. It's just that this world we're living in is, is, is not a good world. It's not a good world. And we think about it all the time. 